All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the present value of annuities. So last time we discussed how to find the future value of annuities or a series of periodic payments, but now we want to talk about how to find their present value. So for example, let's say you wanted to open a bank account with a single deposit today, right? At time equals zero. And you want to deposit an amount such that you can withdraw amounts of $100 each year for 10 years from that account with the first withdrawal taking place one year from today. So that would take place at time equals one. And then this is also given that the account has an interest rate that is equal to 6% or 0 0.06 in decimal form. And so the question is how much should your initial deposit be so that you can do this, so that you can withdraw $100 from this account every year for 10 years given that you have a 6% effective annual interest rate. And so if we were to calculate this using our currently known methods, well, we would say that the present value is equal, and then we have that first payment or withdrawal of $100 times V, right? Our present value factor V for a period of one year, right? Because our first withdrawal is going to take place one year from today. So we would be multiplying that amount by a present value factor of one year in the future. And then we would add our next withdrawal, which would be another $100, but now we'd be multiplying it by the present value factor squared, or V squared, because that's two years in the future. And then we would continue to do this all the way up until that 10th year, where we'd have 100 times V to the 10th power, right? This is our last payment that is 10 years in the future. So in between here, we would have all of our other payments. We would have our payments from year three, to year nine in between here. And so we could certainly find the present value of our scenario using this calculation we wrote down here, but that's admittedly a lot of work to do, right? You'd have a lot of calculations that you'd have to plug into your calculator and it would be quite time consuming, but there's actually an easier way to do this. And so just like we had a formula for the future value of an annuity, we can find a formula for the present value of an annuity. And so in order to find that formula, we need to once again recall a geometric series. And so the geometric series looks like this. We're starting at k equals zero, and we're going to sum number n for some constant multiplied by r to the power of k. And this is going to be equal to that constant times r to the power of zero plus r to the power of one plus r to the power of two, and then plus all the way up to r to the power of n minus one, and then plus r to the power of n, right? So we're going from zero which is this power right here, all the way up to n. So we have that power before n, so n minus one, and then that power of n. And so this is a geometric series that you would have come across in calculus. But we learned that the sum, or all of these terms added up together, was equal to this formula. We have a multiplied by one minus r to the power of n plus one divided by one minus r. And so if we wanted to find the sum of this geometric series, we would plug in each of our values for a, r, and n into this formula, and we would have the sum of that series. And so if we clean up our work a little bit here, then we can apply what we know about a geometric series to our scenario here. And so what we wanna do is we wanna get our series of payments here to be in the same form as this geometric series. And so for one, we're going to wanna to identify what our constant is here in this case. And it looks like it's going to be 100. We have 100 multiplied by each of our present value factors. And then also notice that your first term in the geometric series has the power of zero, but ours has the power of one. And so in order to achieve the power of zero, let's also pull out a factor of V. You notice that each one of these terms is going to have V in it. And so watch what happens if we pull out 100 and V out of each of our terms in our series of payments here. We'll have that the present value is equal to 100 times V times one plus V to the first power plus V to the ninth power. Right, because if we pull 100 times V out of this term, we're just left with one because this is 100 times V. If we pull out 100 and V out of this term, we're just left with V to the first power. And then if we pull it out of our last term, we're left with V to the ninth power. We pulled out that 100 and one of these Vs. So we're left with nine. And so now this looks like a geometric series when we compare it to the geometric series above. The only difference is that in a geometric series, we have R to the zero power, but in our scenario, we just have one. But notice that I could rewrite this to be V to the power of zero, and that would be the same thing as one because anything to the power of zero is equal to one. And so this is technically what we have here, and that matches up with our geometric series. And so we can rewrite this 
in the form of a geometric series. We can say that this is equal to the series from k equals zero to nine, right? That is the largest power that we have in our series of payments. And then we have 100 v times v to the power of k, right? So we have our 100 v, which would be the equivalent of a in this case, right? That's being multiplied by our terms. And then our present value factor v is being taken to that power, just like r, and so that is the term that is being taken to the power of k. And so now that we have represented our scenario here with a geometric series, we can use our sum formula to figure out what the sum of these payments would be equal to, or what the present value of this annuity would be. And so we'll have that this is equal to a, which in this case is 100 times v, so we'll have 100 times v, and then we're gonna have this quantity so we'll have times and then one minus our r term, which in this case is going to be v, right? Our v is being taken to the power of k. So we'll have v to the power of n plus one, which would be nine plus one. So we'll have nine plus one, and then one minus v in the denominator. And so now if we clean up our work again, we can go through and evaluate this expression right here. We know that this is going to be equal to 100 times, and then we have to remember what our present value factor is equal to. We know that it is equal to one divided by one plus the interest rate, which in this case is 0 0.06. So we're gonna have 1.06, and then to the power of whatever the power is of your present value factor, which in this case is one. So we just have 1.06 to the power of one, which is 1.06. And then we'll be multiplying this by one minus, and then we'll have our present value factor, one divided by 1.06 to the power of nine plus one, or the power of 10 and then that will be divided by one minus one over 1.06. And so if we were to plug this into our calculator, 100 times our present value factor times this quantity divided by this quantity, then we would find that our present value is equal to $736 and one cent. And so this is the present value of our series of payments or the annuity that I described at the beginning, right? Where we wanna withdraw $100 for 10 years, starting with one year from today with an interest rate of 0.06. This is how much we would need to deposit today in order to do that. And so now, just like we did for the future value of annuities, we can generalize this formula for the present value of an annuity. And so let's clean up our work here a little bit. And we can take our sum of that geometric series or that series of payments we had and generalize it by making a note of a few things here. So we'll say that the present value of an annuity is going to be equal to some payment x, right? That's going to replace our 100 times v times, and then we're gonna have one minus v to the power of n or the number of payments in our scenario, right? So remember that in our scenario, we were looking at 10 payments of $100 and notice what's in the power here for V, we have nine plus one. And so that was equal to 10. And so that matches up with the number of years or the number of payments in that scenario. And so we can write in the numerator one minus V to the power of N, and that is going to work just fine. And then in the denominator, we will have one minus V. And so now let's take this generalized form and let's simplify it a little bit because it can be a lot nicer than it is right now. And so I'm gonna start by rewriting this V and this V, and I think it's going to help you see how we're going to simplify this. And so we'll have that the present value is equal to X times one over one plus I, right? That is what V to the first power is equal to, one divided by one plus our interest rate, times one minus V to the power of N divided by one minus one over one plus I, right? We just rewrote this V to be equal to one divided by one plus i. And so now if we multiply these two terms together, one times the numerator will not change the numerator, so that's fine. But then we're going to multiply this quantity, one plus i, to each part of the denominator here. So we'll have that this is equal to x times one minus v to the power of n divided by one plus i times one. So you'll have one plus i minus one plus i times one divided by one plus i. So you'll have one plus i divided by one plus i. And so then we'll continue our simplification up here. And then notice that this is going to be equal to one. You're gonna have one plus i divided by one plus i. Well, that is one plus i divided by itself. So that's just gonna be equal to one. So we'll have that this is equal to x times one minus v to the power of n divided by one plus i minus one. And so then this positive one and this negative one will cancel out. 
And so now all we're left with is that the present value is equal to x times one minus v to the power of n divided by i. And this is going to be our formula for the present value of an annuity. We have now found the simplest form of this equation. And just see how much nicer this is compared to this. We don't have that extra v hanging out here, and we just have i in the denominator rather than one minus v. So this is gonna be a lot nicer to use. And so now typically when you represent the present value of an annuity, it will be written like this. We'll have the present value is equal to that payment x times this notation. We're gonna have a and then n and then this bar and then the interest rate i. And so just like for the future value of annuity where we had that the future value is equal to x times s and then n and then this bar and then the interest rate, we also have a similar notation for the present value. We just have an A instead of an S. And this right here is equal to this part of this formula. This notation is equal to this expression. And so to calculate the present value of an annuity, you're going to want to use this notation. And so if you have a payment of $1 per payment period, this would be your formula for the present value of that $1 payment for a certain amount of periods N given an interest rate I it would be equal to this formula. The moment you have a payment greater than $1 is when you multiply by that payment, which we represented with X. And so now let's look at an example where we use this formula. All right, so for example, we have Daniel wants to make a deposit into an account today so that he can withdraw $200 each year for 15 years with the first withdrawal taking place one year from now. If the effective annual interest rate is 4%, how much should he deposit? All right, and so this is a pretty basic scenario where we have a present value of an annuity or a series of payments, right? We're looking for the present value because we're looking at how much should be deposited today, right? He wants to make this deposit today. And we know it's an annuity because we want to withdraw or receive payments of $200 each year for a certain amount of years. And so if we want to find the present value in this scenario, let's start by writing down what we know. And we know that he's going to have withdrawals of $200. And so X is going to be equal to 200. And we know that there's going to be 15 years of 15 withdrawals, right? Because he's withdrawing that $200 from the account for each year for 15 years. And so that means that N is equal to 15. And then we know that the effective annual interest rate is 4%. So we have I is equal to 4% which is equal to 0 0.04 in decimal form. And so then let's write down our present value formula for the present value of an annuity. We know that the present value is equal to X times this notation. We have A and then N and this bar and then our interest rate. And so then this would be equal to 200 times A and then we'll have 15 because N is equal to 15 and then our interest rate of 0 0.04. And so then we can rewrite this Using what we know about this notation and what it's equal to, we'll have that this is equal to 200 times one minus V to the power of N, which is 15 divided by the interest rate 0 0.04. And then of course we can rewrite our present value factor, which is that V, and we'll have that this is equal to 200 times one minus one over one plus the interest rate, so 1.04 to the power of 15 divided by 0 0.04. And so then if we were to plug this into our calculator, we have 200 times this quantity, we would find that the present value of this scenario is equal to $2,223.68. And so this is the present value of those $200 payments or withdrawals that Daniel wants to make for each year for 15 years. This is the amount that he would need to deposit into that account today in order to do that. And so now before we conclude this lesson, there's one more thing I wanna talk about, and that is the limitations or the restrictions on using this notation and this formula. All right, so similar to the notation for the future value of an annuity, we can't just use the present value formula for any scenario. We have to make sure that these three things or these three requirements are met. If they're not met, you can't necessarily use that formula. And so the first thing is that the payments are of equal amount. So this is important. Notice that in all of our examples in this video, the payment or the amount that was being withdrawn from the account was the same every year. In our original example, it was $100 every year. It did not change. And then in our previous example, Daniel wanted to withdraw $200 every year for 15 years. And so that $200 was constant. That's important. The payments or the withdrawals need to be of equal amount. 
And then our second thing is that the payments need to be made at equal intervals of time with the same frequency as the interest rate is compounded. And so this was true in our examples as well. Our payments were made at equal intervals of time, meaning that we withdrew $100 one time every year, right? We didn't go from one year to two years and then one and a half years and then three years, right? We made a withdrawal of $100 one time per year for 10 years, right? They were each one year apart. And the other thing is that that interval of time of one year apart needs to be equal to the frequency of the interest rate that is doing the compounding, right? So for example, with our first scenario, we wanted to make those withdrawals of $100 for every year. And we also had an interest rate that was being compounded every year. It was an effective annual interest rate. And the same thing with our previous example with Daniel. He wanted to withdraw $200 every year and he added effective annual interest rate of 4%. And so this requirement was met. Had that interest rate been a monthly rate, for example, we would have had to convert that monthly rate to an annual rate before we could use the formula for the present value of an annuity. All right, so the payments need to be made at equal intervals of time, and that needs to be the same frequency that the interest rate is compounded for. And then our third requirement is that the valuation point, or what we're trying to solve for, is one payment period before the first payment is made. And so I didn't make a note of this before, but you probably noticed in our example that it said that the first withdrawal is taking place one year from now. That's important to make sure that that withdrawal isn't taking place at the same time that you're making your deposit, right? Daniel wanted to know how much to deposit today so that he can start to make these withdrawals one year from now. And that was also the same thing in our original example where we wanted to know how much to deposit today so that we could withdraw $100 every year for 10 years, starting with one year from now. And so that's important. The valuation point or the present value that you're looking for is one payment period before that first payment is made. And so if all three of these requirements are met, you're good to go and you can use that notation and the formula for the present value of an annuity. All right, and so that's all I had for this lesson. If you wanna see some more example problems where we use the present value of annuities formula, then feel free to check out the examples video I'll have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.